In this video, we show you how to install the JCW Pro Exhaust onto your JCW or Cooper S. On my last car, I had a JCW with the exhaust and I really missed those pops and bangs. So in this video, we show you how to install the JCW Pro Exhaust onto your JCW or the tuning kit onto your Cooper S. My name is Ethan and welcome to Car Creations. All right, so the Mini's lifted up. So now the first step is to open your box with your brand new exhaust in it. Oh my goodness. So there she is. <laughs> this is very exciting. <laughs> wow. So right here, goes up near the top. It comes right from the down pipe and then this will connect to the second piece of the exhaust right here. So this is the exhaust. Here is the JCW actual exhaust portion of it. And that that's what makes this a lot different from the other exhausts. Instead of just having a straight pipe, you can actually turn it off. So right here, they have the silencer. And that basically will switch it from straight pipe to going through the exhaust. So here is the little valve control. You double click it to change modes. And this can sit in your console or connect to your keys or whatever. Uh, so here's the little computer that runs the silencer. That will be located in the car. And then here are all your wires and cables and everything that you need to put it onto the car. Here is the clamp that you clamp these two together right here. So that way you don't have to do any welding, which is, thank you Minnie. And then finally in the box, you have this little piece of, this little uh, folder here. Envelope. Envelope, JCW logo. And then we have the tuning kit certificate itself. Super excited about this. Ooh. Look at that. These are carbon fiber surrounded. You pay a little bit more for these, but they're definitely worth it. My other one didn't have it. And then right here you have a beautiful John Cooper Works logo. That's so exciting. Okay, let's get this old one off and then we'll start putting the new one on. If you're interested, please use our links below and we'll have exactly what you need for a JCW, a Cooper S, and a Cooper S F55 with the four doors. All right, so before we do anything, we have to take this bolt off right here. And as you can see, it is very, very corroded. We can't get the bolt off. We're gonna have to cut it off and then find another bolt for the time. But we'll see how it goes. I got it. Oh, and it slings right out. Oh, that's Dude, easy. Look, look at that. that. Cool. So now we just- Two brackets. Two brackets here. and the rear. While he is working on that over there, we are going to try to get these ourselves. And they use uh, Torx. So we're just gonna figure out what size Torx it is and oh, what size is it? It's a T50 Torx, so we're gonna use, hopefully get these out, and it's gonna be easier than what he's doing, cause uh, he goes to the gym every day, and I only go every second day, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next thing that we're gonna do is get these brackets out, and this could be hard. There's probably a tool that you use, but I'm not sure what that tool is. We greased her up good, and now we're trying to get over the the edge is coming. We tried to do this one here, but it's pushing too far this way, so we're gonna do the other one, which is up, up there first. All right, so after much literal blood, sweat, and tears, we got this one off. We used the uh, pressure and prying method of a screwdriver and large muscles. And now we just have to do this one here. Same method, but hopefully it should be quite a bit easier. Last time I paid the dealership $1,500 to get the exhaust installed, so this time hopefully we're saving that money by blood, sweat, and tears. So this is the easy bit right here. So the other one we did has a T50, and this is a T40? T45. A T45. Okay, with it out, we have one thing that whenever you redo an exhaust, you have to do every single time. <laughs> All right, yeah, we definitely need an exhaust. That sounds terrible. All right, so now we get to the electrical. And in order to do any electrical, we've said many times in the videos, you must disconnect the battery. So before you do that, you have to open the boot, else it won't open. So, quickly doing that. Now we disconnect the battery here. All right, so that is disconnected. Now we have to go and we're gonna start at the back and we're gonna start removing the liner from the bottom of the boot and then we're gonna go along the right side where we're gonna take off the right paneling of the boot 
and then slowly work up and take off some paneling all the way up till we get to the BDC. Because we're basically going to run a wire all the way down. We have down here uh, the trim piece which we have to remove next, right here. It should be pretty easy, you just basically pull it up. Lift up the seat and then pull right here. The seat actually will come up. There's a little fastener right there that you can release. And voila! So once you have that pulled up, you can now move back one and do the one up here. Okay, so once again for this one, you really don't have to worry about any trim tools. You just lift it and you pull it straight up. There we go. After you get that one out, the next step is just to remove this footwell trim that covers the BDC. Alright, so for the fuse panel, all you have to do is reach out underneath the glove box and pull out really hard. Kind of twist it around until you can get it down and twist it around backwards. Now that we have access to this, we have the car completely opened up, so then we can start the wiring. We're gonna attach this on the car in this corner, far corner right over here. Um, there should be actually already brackets there to do it. And then you put the washer on and then you put the bolt. And finally, you just get a 10 mil and you just fasten it into place and you have the silencer on. All right, it's all bolted in. So all these wires that come in the kit is called wiring harness number F, or I guess letter F. And what we're gonna do is plug the one plug in here into the receiver that we have in, uh, that we just installed into the car. And then this little grommet goes down to the bottom of the boot. So you can route that down there. And then this long cable is gonna get routed to the front of the car. Okay, so we have the wire plugged in and grounded. Now what we're gonna to try to do is route this to the very front. So I'm just gonna open it up to give us more room and take you on our journey. So what I did first was connected this wire to go through onto a coat hanger so we can pull it through easily. So first of all, we're just going to go through that hole right there. Alright, so the wire comes from right here. It goes all the way along. I buried it through the carpet, through down there. Don't mind my light wire. Along through here, and then there, that's where it's going to go to the fuses. So just give me a moment to button it all back up, and then we'll show you how to connect the fuses in the front. Alright, so open up your bag, and inside we have two fuses. One is labeled N, and the other Oh, so the first one that we're gonna work on is the N1. The N1 is gonna be for the red cable. So find the red cable, you're gonna go to the fuse box and plug it into slot F74. All right, so now you find your the large fuse with fuse N right here. And we're gonna plug that into the spot that uh, we were just talking about. The fuse, little fuse number O, and plug it to that spot F59. All right, I'm gonna type these cables, put this back together, and then we can go to the back and route the cable down to the silencer underneath the car. And in order to get that wiring done, we actually need to remove this heat shield here so that we can run the cable up through the boot, as Ethan likes to call it, I call it a trunk. Now it's time for a time lapse. These heat shield panels are actually sectioned off, like there's one here, one here, one here for the majority of the exhaust lane. There's another one down there, and then there's another one for where it goes to the up pipe. So we actually have to loosen this first section of the exhaust tunnel um, to drop it down a bit so that we can get this piece out. And there you have it. And the hole's actually really far that way. So I did a little bit of, a little bit of investigative work. And you actually need to pull off this big plastic tub as well. We gotta pull off a couple things here. There's one up back there. And then I think she'll be loosey goosey. We have this hole exposed, which we're gonna feed that cable through to hook up the valve control. It's gonna come through here, it's gonna go over the plastic, through, somehow through or around the heat shield that we'll put back in, hook up to the exhaust, and we'll be golden. All right, so we're gonna push this down through here. And this grommet just fits perfectly into place like so. And now we just go to the underside where the rest of it takes place. So this wire will go around the corner, hold it in place there, and then it will connect to the exhaust. So as you can see here, we there's two bits of this. There's this weird basket type material or type gadget, which you basically bend the tabs over towards the back. We put the new clamp on, and now we should be able to put the pipe on. So we decided that we're gonna leave it there and align it in a minute. Right now we're just going to put one of the first brackets in so then we can ride up the exhaust that we have coming in, sit it on it, and then work on this end, and then we'll align it from there. Now we just hope that this will work out oh, under the car. Right. Oh, dude. Whoa! Nice work. Let's join them together. All right, so getting to the exciting bit, now that James has done all the hard stuff, I can do the easy stuff. There we go. 
and then it just plugs in right here. It looks fantastic. Connect the battery and then we need to pair the remote to it and then we can take it down and test it out for the first time. All right, here we go, first startup. All right, so it is now time to install the tips. And I got the carbon fiber ones. You can get the stainless steel ones or you can get aftermarket ones. All right, so first of all, you just need a three millimeter Allen key. This is where you decide how far out you want them. Technically, most say that you should have them in line with the bumper right here. There we go, so we're just gonna tighten down slightly. All right, so I can see them on the car right now and they look fantastic. We're gonna go wash this car and then we'll show you what it looks like on the road. We just installed the exhaust in this car and oh my goodness, already a huge difference. It took us a bit longer than we thought it would. The hardest bit was actually working on the hangers to get the exhaust off. But once we did that, it was clean sailing from there and putting the new exhaust on it was super easy. Uh, we got it all hooked up, remote working, exhaust on, and the farts in between sounds so good. Woo! <laughs> after on the downshift. Here the pops just absolutely gloriously just bubble out like anything. And then if you're just driving down the road you just tap it. Instant pops whenever you want. I want pops right now. You have pops. So much fun. One of my previous cars that I had this on was a manual JCW. That was a lot of fun, but it was also, uh, you could control everything about the car. What you didn't get in the manual car was a little burble, or some people say fart in between gear change. Something that I kind of forgot that Minis would have. And my brother had that in his M335i BMW, and it sits down so good. excited when I heard that in this car because it kind of adds something extra to the whole exhaust feel that we we're going for. Uh, what we didn't do was install the tuning bit of the exhaust. The reason for that was that we are going to be installing a different tune on the car anyway. The smile this car brings to me is exponentially more than it had than I was getting before. My favorite part about a Mini is the exhaust and just hearing those pops and crackles as you're going up and down throughout the rev range. It just, it's kind of the soul of the car, and it's one of the main reasons I keep going back to a Mini. Every extra pop equals another smile. It's just so much fun. I just literally can't get over how much fun this exhaust is. It kind of brings the little child out in me, and I know a lot of people aren't really into pops and crackles, and whatever, I don't care. They put huge smiles on my face, and that's what and that's what I love about it. Once you get the exhaust installed, how do you get the perfect amount of pop? Well, what you want to do is downshift, and you want to get the car to be around 3,000 RPM. So we're gonna get it there, and then you gun just past 3,000, let off, and you'll get pops. And then you just feather it. Little feather, pop. Little feather, pop. Little feather. And no matter how terrible your day was up to that point, it's suddenly the best day ever and you're on top of the world. Uh, before we finish up the video, let's just get back to a spot where we can pull over and let's just show you the difference between the new exhaust and the old exhaust. All right, this is what it sounds like before. Okay, but then after, you get your little John Cooper Works button, press it twice. Here, little and the flap opens at the back. Now, we are ready to turn on the car. All right, so we just got back from having way too much fun listening to this exhaust. It's honestly my favorite part about a Mini Cooper. Those loud bangs and crackles and pops and the sound of revving up and down through the engine range. Oh, I love it so much. We actually have links for the exact system that we used down below, and we really appreciate it if you use those links to check it out. 
as it supports the channel. There is exhaust for both a JCW and then the exhaust and tuning kit for the Cooper S. If you have any questions, please leave them down below as we really appreciate it. But most of all, we hope you all have an amazing rest of your day and enjoy modding your mini. Hello all, welcome to Car Creations. My name is Ethan Jones and in this video we will be reviewing the Hubble Space Telescope. 